All right, welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about the circle tools. So like always, we're going to get started with a, by selecting our sketch. So you can start by selecting the sketch plane, pressing Shift and S, and that'll bring up your sketch. Remember, P to hide your planes, P for planes, and N for normal to normalize your view. All right, so just like last time with the rectangles, we have a drop down for our circle. So you will see we have a center point circle, a three point circle, and an ellipse. Um, in the last video, I talked how if it didn't have a shortcut key, it probably wasn't used as much. Um, center point circle obviously is going to be your go to with that C, but you'll see when we do the three point circle, um, some examples we use for that. Um, it doesn't have a shortcut key, but I, I actually use that one quite a bit um, in some mock ups and an ellipse. We'll talk about it when we get there, but basically think about it like a rectangle meets a circle. So we'll go ahead and get started with a center point circle. I'm going to select that by pressing the letter C. Um, and just like before, I'm going to click my center point and it's going to now pivot around wherever. So if I need a rectangle or a, sorry, a circle with a diameter, and that's what that little circle with a line through it means is, is diameter. And the diameter is the dimension from the whole one side of the circle to the other side. So if I need a two inch diameter circle, I'm going to type two and press enter. And you'll see that from side to side of that circle is exactly uh, two inches. So again, center point circle, you can click and hold and then let go, or you can click once and click again. Either way, it's, it's two clicks. Um, and then that text box pops up asking you how big you want that circle to be. So let's make this one four. Enter. Very simple, easy, straightforward way to make circles. Um, but the whole point of that center point is that you have a center point. So let's start on our origin as our center point. So we'll select the center point tool again. We'll select our origin. And I'm going to tell this I need an eight inch circle. Um, biggest thing we use this for in my classes is if I need some custom spacers or washers or shims or whatever, you can you can make your own center point circle. Now, a lot of times it's hard to get the center points lined up in some of the other programs. So this is how you would do it. You do your origin. I got an eight inch circle on the outside and I click again and I want this to be uh, seven inches on the inside. And now I have my uh, shim, my washer, my flange, whatever you want to call it, but they're both based around the origin as the center point. Now, can I click a part of my circle as a center point? Absolutely. I can click wherever I want and I can do another one over here. I can click wherever I want in space and have that be the center point, but it's showing me that that's where that point is going to be oriented about. So center point circle, pretty easy and straightforward. Let's go ahead and select everything and delete it. And we'll move on to our three point circle. Uh, three point circle does not have a shortcut key. So we're going to click um, three point circle. You'll see it gets highlighted up here in the toolbar. The only thing that doesn't work very well with three point circle is I can't set the center point right off the bat. So if I click the origin, that's one of my points and you'll see it pivots around like a wheels rolling on my origin. Okay. And then I click another point and then another point on here. The, when I use this feature, um, when I am tracing something, so like I've made some engine mounts before and I needed bolt holes to match exactly where they were on a picture. Um, it wasn't always feasible to uh, just draw a circle in the right spot. So I clicked all three points of a circle where I knew it would match up and then clicked those three points and then it auto scaled for me. And then I figured out, oh, hey, those need to be about half inch or those need to be about three quarters of an inch. And I got a picture from somebody to match up and I never actually saw the part that I was making the part for. So that's where this, this tool kind of comes in handy. Um, if you're doing things with art and you import a picture and you're like, Hey, I really want uh, this circle to match. And you're like, well, I've tried it with the center point, but I can't quite find the center point. This is what you would use it for. So let's say this will make a 30 inch 
uh, circle right here with the three points and I can't I didn't know where this center point was but now I want to base something around that now I can come back in with my center point circle and now it's perfectly aligned with a circle that I didn't quite know where it went but I know that that circle matched and needed to be 30 inches or whatever so again for a center point or a three point circle you just click like it says three points and then give it a dimension so 15 obviously it's going to move those points if you do that but if I click the three points and then let it be it's like oh okay that's how big that's supposed to be if i'm measuring a picture so that's how you do the uh three point circle i'm gonna delete all of those and our last tool under here is the ellipse tool and the ellipse tools like i said is kind of a mix between the two if i hover over it um, on the drop down it'll tell you that a ellipse is a sketch uh tool that is defined by its center point major axis and minor axis so basically major axis would be like your length and your width would be your minor axis so if i'm doing a rectangle i got my width and my length uh, but i'm also giving it a center point so it's kind of like a center point rectangle but it's rounding the corners for me and so i'll show you that so i'm going to select the ellipse first thing i'm going to do is select a center point and then i can go out either up or down i can go sideways whatever i'm going to go to the side and you'll see that now as I do this, it gives me two dimensions. So I need this to be 46 wide by 37.75 tall, and I get an ellipse. Now we know it's not a perfect circle. Like I said, it's, it's a length and a width or a height, whatever you want to call it, with a center point. So you're getting those curves to match. So we'll do another one over here on the center. Same center point. Maybe this time I'm only going to go out <clears throat> uh, 30 center to center, and I'm going to go up 10 on that. So you get some oblong shapes. There's a whole probably two or three semesters of different calculus and trigonometry classes that can teach you all the math that goes into these um, ellipses. But when we're doing things in the fabrication shop, you measure a distance across top to bottom and left to right and you find your center point, and this is how you're gonna get a lot of drawings and, and parts created in a really, really quick time. So those are all our circle tools in that dropdown. So again, center point circle, um, shortcut key of C, click a center point, click how big you want it, type a dimension. This one we're gonna make 50. We'll zoom out a little bit. Three point circle, click three points. So let's say I wanted a circle to touch here and to touch here and to be 80 in diameter you get some tangential relationships and you can do that with that three point uh tool and our last one is our ellipse click a center point click a spot out to the side give it a length and a width and you have all your circle tools available there. Um, hoping this is this is working out pretty well for you guys. Um, leave any comments down below for any questions you might have if you're running into issues. But again, practice with this stuff. So if you want to open this video <coughs> and then open a another uh, document for you to practice on, just draw some circles, draw some ellipses, center point, three point. Go back and do the rectangles, the center point rectangles, the aligned rectangles, do the lines, play with all that stuff and just figure out how to get some stuff drawn. That's going to be the easiest way. And then um, I'll have another set of videos that will show you how to get some drawings done. But for now, in this on shape orientation, I want you guys to just learn what the tools do. Uh, our next video will be working on arcs. So if you got these down, jump to that video. And like, again, let me know any questions you might have. Um, send me a message on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you guys later.